Welcome all, adults and adolescents alike. This is Randy Roo. With part 6 of Doki Doki, this is going to be a very special episode because I get to talk without needing to be quiet. And I'm hoping that my voice will be heard better. I do have my mic in a different position, so we'll just have to see what I'm going to do. But, <clears throat> we left off with Monica as the last person. There it is. Not looking forward to this, but I have been watching someone play Course Party, so I am all within the mindset now of playing this game because I know I'm at the doorstep of when all the creepy things are supposed to happen, as my sources have told me. So, without further ado, let's look at oh, Monica's damn poem. Hi again, Alistair. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad, I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. Uh, I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I give my poem to Monica. Alright, this one's good. It feels like you're not only getting more comfortable with your style, but the imagery is better than the last one I read. Just wondering, but have you been finding inspiration in Yuri's writing style? You do now. Hmm. I guess so. You can't deny that she's talented. Yeah, totally. I think her poems are the most... romantic. That's the best way to describe it. No, say Yuri's the romantic one. She's like a totally different person with it when she picks up a pet. I noticed that too. Or when she's talking about literature, it's like a light turns on its head. Mm-hmm. Sadly, it's hard to get much personal conversation out of her. Trust me, I've tried. And I have tried too. And succeeded. Who knows what goes on in that head of hers? I hope you don't mean that in a bad way. No, of course not. I just meant that I wish she didn't keep so much to herself. But still, defending her like that. You must be pretty into her. No. No. Where'd you get that idea? Stop peering into my life. What? You completely misunderstood. Ah, calm down, I'm kidding. Besides, I'm pretty sure she's already got a boyfriend. Wait. Really? Really? You better not be pulling my leg here, Monica. Yeah, fictional one anyway. Okay. I can, I can accept that. Open-ended relationships with fictional characters is fine. Monica kind of whispers that last part to me. It's just a hunch, but... Well, there's not really anything wrong with that. Oh, well, I know. I was just saying. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? Jinky, the subject. I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. Does that say save me? A. That's an A, right? Oh boy. Save me. Okay, poem. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors, flashing, expanding, piercing, red, green, blue, and endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating, waveforms, squeaking, scratching, piercing, sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable, like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaning. Load me. Um. Why is there so much blank in the tweet? Hmm. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. Even though that's what I meant in my head. It's just the kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. It's kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Yeah, lots of space that you won't write in. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. Or it's space-time manipulation. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. Okay, I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. Uh, sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression 
of a feeling, or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Ugh. Okay, what is it? Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. Ha 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 ha! Funny! You should say that, Monica. You never know when you might change your mind. <laughs> or when something unexpected may happen. As it will, in the next few minutes, I'm sure. Wait, is this tip even about writing? No, clearly not. You don't even realize it yourself. Weirdo. What am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. You're welcome. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if everyone could come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything in just a few days. Anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We don't. We won't need much more than a few decorations. Sayori has been working on posters, and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Ah, sorry. I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing. <laughs> oh, oh, poor Yuri. Oh, Monica. Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. So you're always putting it all on the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. Hehe. <laughs> so Yori, who's been coloring a poster, hold it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't you didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Uh well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no, it's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know. There is no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I, I agree with Natsuki. I could never, in my life, do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys, no, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple of days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So, I'm sorry. Hmm. But, I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the faith of this club. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah. It's about expressing their feelings. Being intimate with yourself. Finding new horizons. And having fun. That's right. And it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know I do. I know you do. You, me, all. You, me, he, she, me. And if all, and if all it takes is standing in front of a, the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Hmm. Eh. Eh. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori so looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... Mm, it looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Uh, okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. Alright! Phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Mm, Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expected faces. 
I, I guess I don't really have a choice. Haha, <laughs> that's everyone! You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh. Yes, I'm sure that that is an accurate statement, Yuri. As much as I don't want you to die. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. N no way! Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little bit more comfortable. Can I go next? Uh, of course. Now let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. <laughs> <clears throat> poem reciting time. Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. They already look to me. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the room the recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That... that was good, Monica! <laughs> Thank you very much. I was hoping... I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? Hi. I'll go next. Ooh, Yuri! Go! Do it! Get it, girl! What? Yuri's fired up all of a sudden! Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quietly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances, glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It, it's called After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she flinched. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back to reality and glances around her, as if she bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save this situation. Oh, that's me talking. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterward, and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were caught off so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applied, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back into her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay, I guess I'm next then. Sayori hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Ah. Ah ha ha! Sorry, I giggled. <laughs> Sayori? It's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Uh, try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're re reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror or in your own bed. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best that way. I see, I see. Okay then. Sayori begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come out from Sayori's voice um, almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poem. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes, and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori! <laughs> even Alistair liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem puts you really nicely. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Yeah? I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. We might need a little more force behind them, 
depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's, well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do in front of everyone. <laughs> the next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little, that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time for the festival, you know. Okay. Now who's next? Natsuki? Hm. Don't make me go before Alistair. It's not like I can compare it to you guys anyway. Might as well let Alistair lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. Okay, Natsuki. Jeez. It's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and stand, step in front of the plate. Everyone has their eyes on me. Again. <laughs> Making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry, I'm not really good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities than more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. Alright then. Then that just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah, I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly sits, gets out of her seat, and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called. called. Why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting. Hmm. Anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. When she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken alone. The words feel like they bounce up and down, as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes, and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You better not make me do that again. Uh, well... You at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people. I mean, doing it in front of other people will be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friend... Oh, I'm her friend! It's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what it's like. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez, I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes you really happy with your damn post that needs to stop because it's creepy. And I don't like you and you need to stop. Uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. Alright. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through. If it's for the sake of the club, and impressing Monica. And no, you don't want to impress her, you want to impress Yuri. Then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep. Look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys, don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Alistair. You don't have to say it. Whatever. Let's go already. I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori is being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Hmm? Huh? Sorry. I was spacing out. Ah, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... I, I mean... Sorry, fumble, fumble with our words. So, let's just say that one day, Yuri asked to walk home with you. Oh god, no. No, don't ask me these questions! Huh? What would you do? 
What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> well, oh, god damn it. I, I actually get to cheat. Okay, I'm gonna leave this right here. And we'll answer in the next part. Good gravy with these choices. It's Sayor. She won't take it that bad, but any, uh, my thoughts can be safer later. Anyway, I'll leave it here. See you all in the next one. Bye, 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 bye. Bye. Ah. I gotta stop it. Oh, no!